Hi and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking retro animated text effect using Adobe After Effects. So anyways guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have to do here is we have to create a new composition. So I'm just going to go with a 1920 by 1080 pixel document, 30 FPS and a duration of about 10 to 15 seconds. Press OK. Once you have that, then the next thing that you will need to do is you will need to create a new solid. So I'm just going to call this uh, gradient. And once we have that, then the next effect that we need to put on here is four color gradient. So you can see here that I've got the four color gradient. Now all I have to do is go to color hunt and choose some of the colors that I will uh, put into this gradient. Now you need two different sets of colors. So I'm going to be pretty much choosing this set as well as this set. So all I have to do is just click on this and then change it in the color. Cool. So now you've got your base and you can move these things around if you want. Um, and you can see what actually happens once you start to move these things around. The colors are now kind of merging into each other and that's part of the effect. So what we need to do is we need to duplicate that. So I'm going to press command D to duplicate that. And then I'm going to set the mode to lighten. All right, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the colors again. So I'm going to go back to color hunt. So here I am in color hunt and I'm going to choose, you know, kind of contrasting colors. So I'm going to add all these colors in there. Cool. So now once you have that, now if you move them around, you can see what is actually happening to the colors in there. Now, if you want the colors to be a little bit more prominent, what you can do is you can always go back into your color settings and then you can play around and maybe add some darker colors in there. Or if you have duplicates of color, you can see that just by changing that, then everything else changes in the whole composition. So maybe I'll just move it to that just so you can see it a little bit better. So there we go. All right, now going back to that first layer, what we need to do is we need to animate these points. So now I'm going to move these points around. So I'm gonna select all these points. So point one, point two, point three, point four. I'm gonna press U on my keyboard to bring up all my keyframes. Move forward in time to about two seconds and then just move these points around. So I'll move that one there, I'll move that one there. And then I'm going to repeat the same process again at four seconds. So I'll move it a bit more. I'll move that one down. I'll move this one up and I'll move this one down. And then I will repeat the process again. So now I'm going to make them all move just like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of those bar the first uh, lot of frames and then uh, just copy them. So that's Command C to copy and then Command V to paste. And then what I'm gonna do is at 14 seconds, I'm just gonna put the original frames back to the start. So now that I have all of that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight all of them. And then if I go to animation, keyframe assistant, easy ease, or you can press F9, that will give it a smoother kind of look. So that's pretty cool. So now we need to distort it a little bit more. So the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to create a new adjustment layer and inside the adjustment layer, we are going to add some mesh warp. Now you can go crazy here, but I'm basically going to have three rows and three columns. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on this point, move it around and then maybe move the lines to get some kind of nice kind of curve happening there. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. And if you only want to move one of these at a time, you can hold command as well. So now you can get some kind of really unique looks. And all we're trying to do is just kind of distort it a bit. So all I'm going to do is just make sure that I'm just moving these things around. And I'm going to do the last point over here, just like that. So now when you scrub through that, now there's a bit more distortion on that. So we're going to add even more distortion on there by creating another new adjustment layer and adding a another effect called turbulent displace. And you can see that now it kind of mashes the colors all together. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna increase the amount to about 120 and I'm gonna increase the size to let's say 300, maybe even go up to about 400. So what you wanna do is like if you increase the amount too much, then you start to have these, you know, um, artifacts in here and that's what you don't want. So you wanna make sure that you don't go too crazy with the amount and just make sure that you scrub through just to see if there are any black uh, sections in there. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now all I'm gonna do is just animate the evolution. So I'm gonna click on the stopwatch for evolution, press U to bring up my keyframes, go to the end of the composition and let's just do that two revolutions. Now you can see that there is something happening over there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna decrease that amount. And then again, I'm just gonna scrub through. All right, there was something black in there. So I'm just gonna decrease the amount again. And I think that looks uh, actually pretty good. Now, another effect that we're gonna put on here is some Gaussian blur. So if we just bump up the Gaussian blur to, I don't know, let's say 60 or so, now the colors kind of uh, are blurred as well. So you can play around with some of, this, uh, some of these settings as well. So once you're happy with all of that, what we need to do is we need to highlight all of that. And then if we go to layer pre-compose and we're just gonna call it a uh, gradient. All right, we're gonna move all attributes. Now we need to have some text. So I'm just gonna right click and add a new text layer. And the font that I'm using is called Arzo Sans Black. So uh, you can download this uh, if you want, or you can choose your own font. I've just uh, bumped up the font size to nearly about 800. Um, and the other thing that I've done in here is I've just brought the text a little bit closer together. So maybe like negative 13 or something like that. And then I'm just gonna align it to the center of my composition. So once you have your text in there, you need to make sure that you go onto the gradient layer. And then over here you have track mat. And then if you go and add the text as the track mat, now you have that inside of the text. And that looks pretty cool. Um, but the final things that we can do over here is we can add some noise. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight both those layers again, go to layer pre-compose, and I'm just gonna call that uh, final. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another new adjustment layer, search for the effect called noise, and then bump that up to about 10%. And so now you've got that cool kind of retro-y kind of look to it. Now, the final last thing that you can add to this is some glow. So if you go and put some glow on there and you reduce the glow intensity to about 0.1, and then you can really play around with some of the radius as well as the threshold. So you don't wanna to go too crazy on that, just a little bit more glow, um, kind of really gives it that those retro vibes. So anyways, guys, uh, that's it for this short tutorial. I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.